when should a beekeeper start calling queens? Well, it depends. It depends on the time of year and the weather. A lot of queens won't start laying until it starts warming up outside. It doesn't matter if you put in pollen substitute or anything else in the hive. They, they still won't do anything until it warms up. And the other thing, the number two, is the breed. Like, say, for instance, Russian honeybees are known to be late starters, which really isn't a good thing because I'm going to show you here in a minute. Your colonies are continually dying during the winter because of toxic chemicals. If you have a breed that doesn't start until later, it's a good chance that colonies are going to be too small to restart. So you want to go ahead and get a breed that starts early. So what if they eat a lot of honey or syrup or whatever? At least you have that colony. And then the other thing is the age of the queen. Sometimes an old queen, she may have had two summers. She won't start again the third summer. Or even after one summer, she, she takes a long time to start this, the second summer. So that's the three things. Time of year, and the weather. Number two, breed. And three, age of queen. So let me show you this colony here. It's important to keep good records. According to my records, 107. See, I said 107. That's another thing I don't like about humans. They say 107. That's technically, that's not an O. That's a zero. 107, okay? And another thing, I live up north and everybody says black ice. Technically, the ice isn't black. The ice is clear. That drives me nuts. It's just people. Okay, 107. It's right here. According to my notes, I made this list. According to my notes, it's a new colony. It's not in my old colony list. It's in a new colony. So this is a queen from 2021. It's currently uh, March 3rd, 2022. So I'm going to go ahead and we're going to take this off. And I'll show you. I cleaned out the bottom screen probably because I have my... Uh, I should patent this. I see videos on about all these new beehives and stuff and how it's the greatest thing. But nobody's catching on to my... Uh, my insulated fillers. I can turn a deep, a regular deep into a nuke. Okay, I've got bees here, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do this. That gets the bees off the screen. And these are my insulated fillers here. So these are in here, and I know I've been in here recently. <clears throat> and every time I'm in a hive, I clean out the bottom screen. And what I do is I take I, uh, I take a shim, I set it on the floor. Now I'll pick this up. I'll set that on the floor. And you look how many dead bees in here since the last time I was in here, just probably a couple weeks ago. It's ridiculous. The bees are dying at a rapid rate. The later in winter, the more rapid they die. So that's why it's important to have your queen restart as soon as possible. And if she doesn't restart, like I said, it's March 3rd. Do I gain anything by killing this queen right now? Hell no. I don't gain anything at all by killing this queen right now. All I can do is continue to try to maintain this colony the best I can until it warms up or the weather changes and they seem to think it's time for the queen to start laying. Okay, let's take this and put it back. And this is what makes my method better. I'm not using a nuke box. Why is it better? See, I have a place where I can slide these frames. And I can take out the other insulated filler. <coughs> and you know, there's, there's two reasons why that's important. It helps keep the side of the hive warmer. They don't get the cold from the outside. And then the other thing is, you don't have a bunch of frames in there where wax moths can get on and you have less issue of pest. So there's two reasons why I do that. Besides the fact that it makes it easier to do hive inspections because I have a place to slide these, slide these frames over. And I take a flashlight and I will look. Nine times out of ten, you'll find the queen in the center of the cluster. And that's a small cluster. Oh, I hate when I do that. 
the bees are on that. Normally I take more time doing this, but because I'm doing a video, I don't want to waste your time. There's a queen here. You know, it's a, it's a good chance she could die because the bees are dying from the toxic chemicals in the environment. It's in their uh, it's in their food, and queens are not immune to the toxic chemicals. There's the queen right there. See, see how she's a dark queen. She's got Russian heritage because I had some foliage Russian bees queens for a while. So she's she's a late starter. There's no reason for me on March 3rd to go through and start killing this queen. She's a new queen. I just need to give her more time. And every time you handle your bees, you want to be careful. Don't jar them around to get them all stressed out. And every time you put it back together, you look to make sure you're not squishing a bee. Because this is a small colony. Think about it. You kill a few bees... That's a large percentage of that colony. Okay, I've got it back together, and I did drop some uh, pollen substitute in there. I try to give them a new piece every week because what happens is sometimes it dries out. This is not dry, but I don't know why they're not. Sometimes the queen will start laying, and there may be some pollen in the hive that's better than the substitute, and they won't take the substitute. But I'm not concerned about the queen laying right now. Like I said, it's only March 3rd and she's got Russian heritage. She's a dark queen. So she may not be like the other queens to start laying right away. So I just have to deal with it. So I'm going to put this hive back together. So again, three three things. One, discern, deciding whether to call a queen or not. Time of year and weather. Right now it's still cold out. And there's a certain time of year. It can't give you a date. It's just like... When it warms up and all of a sudden winter's over, the bees know that. That's when my, my queens will start putting out a lot of eggs. And they know, hey, it's time time to put out a lot of eggs. We're going to have a pollen flow or, I mean, a nectar flow here pretty soon. And it's time to get the colony larger. You can't induce it into a honeybee. There's just no, no way to do that. Putting this stuff in a hive doesn't seem to make a difference on a lot of colonies. They won't do anything until the weather changes. Okay, then the breed... I would not advise getting a breed. It's a late starter because of the varroa mites and the toxic chemicals in the hive. It kills your bees during the winter. And then the age of the queen. I try to see, get as many summers out of a queen as possible. I just like to see how long they live. I've never had a queen last three years, which would basically be four summers. So um, the first summer they build up, I make the colony, the colony gets larger. And then sometimes I put a queen in, a new, in an older colony for honey protection. But a lot of the late summer queens that I have, I let them build up and I'll keep them in a warm area during the winter to uh, maintain that that colony, make sure it doesn't die. Then the following year, the next summer, that's when they make the honey. And then the third summer, I like to use a queen for breeding for my mating nukes. I don't buy queens. It's a waste of money. My queens are better quality than anything I've ever bought, okay? Thank you.